Hi everyone, it's Mike with Foster DevOps. And today we're gonna go over switching from SQLite 3 to Postgres QL in Backstage. For production use cases, we prefer to use Postgres QL to be able to have larger write volumes and better persistence with our data. To match our production use case locally, what we should do is run a PostgreSQL database locally for our backstage instance to use. So to do that, we'll have to do a few things first. We'll need to download PostgreSQL in a PostgreSQL client. In this tutorial, we'll be going through pgAdmin4. And once we run pgAdmin4, we'll be able to create a PostgreSQL server on top of that, we will install PostgreSQL as a yarn package in Backstage. And then we'll need to configure the PostgreSQL database in Backstage. So to get started, we'll download Postgres PG Admin 4 by going to pgadmin.org and going to download. I am on Mac. So I'll go to the Mac downloader and I can download just the newest release. And I would, since I'm on an ARM machine, I would download the ARM64. Um, however, I already have PG Admin 4. So go ahead, pause the video and download it yourself. And once you follow the installation guide, you should be able to pull up PG Admin 4. Um, you might be able to set a password to join PG Admin 4. I did not. Uh, so I opened it up straight to this page. And what we'll do is just add a new server. And I'll call this server Backstage. And then we'll need to go to the connection and our host name is localhost. This is our PostgreSQL default port we like to use. And then we can just keep the same Postgres username. And then for password, I will use secret, S-E-C-R-E-T. And then I will save that. And I should have connected to a new database called Backstage, or this database instance, and it comes with a couple databases because I've already pre-populated some uh, just through the application running. Um, so that's how we instantiate our local pgadmin PostgreSQL server for our databases. Um, now we have to tell Backstage how to interact with our database server. Um, to do that, you should open up your favorite text editor for Backstage or code editor. I'm using NeoVim um, in my terminal. And to start, we'll run a yarn add dash dash CWD packages slash backend. And we will do the, we will install our necessary package PG for Postgres. And it'll just add any of our dependencies. And there we go. Now we'll go back to our server or our code and our text editor. And I'll go into my appconfig.yaml. And before, under backend.database, it will say the client is the SQLite 3, which is not persistent, and the connection is just in memory. Um, what we'll do is get rid of those lines, and we will need to create change the value of client and the connection. Um, I have 
it written out here, but for Postgres, the client will be PG and the connection object will be a host port user and password. And all of those will be saved as environment variables. Um, you can use these environment variable names and I'll show you what that env will look like. Um, so once you've changed this database, this backend.database object in the app config, we'll go to our terminal again and go to our env. And we'll set some of these environment variables. Our host is just localhost. Our port is that 5432. Our user is Postgres and the password is secret. Again, all of these values were set when we initially created our database server. So all of those values I'm putting in here as environment variables. Next, we will source and our .env, which will put our environment variables into our terminal session. And then I will do a yarn install since I added the PG or our Postgres. And once that is saved and ran, I'll run a yarn dev. And now we'll have a successful backstage instance running. Yep, looks like our web. Yep. And it is healthy. So now we can just add a guest user. Add a guest user again, just so we can get in there without any credentials. sign in and we'll add so now we should have our backstage instance and we'll have our databases being filled with our schemas so now we have a backstage instance with PostgreSQL and that will match our production better so that we'll have more persistent storage and faster read and write times with our backstage project. In the next video, we'll get into the backstage templating and the backstage catalog. So we'll actually have more things to store, which would be helpful for the PostgreSQL. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.